what went wrong in Afghanistan and did it have to end this way? No, not at all. It was totally avoidable. Uh, just listening to your guests, I mean, uh, what a bunch of clowns. Uh, he should be hanging his head in shame and resigning immediately. All of these people. Uh, for NATO, the most powerful coalition of the most powerful nation to screw this up and to keep on coming up with excuses and no one's taking responsibility. Even the US president says the buck stops with me and then he goes on to blame everyone else. Uh, the timeline was ridiculous. The way that they transitioned, attempted to transition to the Afghan forces was ridiculous. And the exit, um, you know, and just the fact that they pull out uh, military uh, personnel out first and then worry about the civilians. It's just, you couldn't make this up. Mm. And Saad, we see now the Taliban continuing to consolidate control over Afghanistan and in particular consolidating control in Kabul. Negotiations are underway about forming a new government, whatever that is going to look like. What's your take on what happens next now? I'm not sure if they're negotiating. I think that they, I don't even know if they're consulting. Uh, some of the people you mentioned, I, I obviously speak to them daily. Um, I, I, they've won. Uh, the, the victory was absolute. Um, I think they may want to be inclusive. And I think this is why the world needs to engage with them to ensure that they're inclusive, uh, that they, they don't uh, create another sort of uh, government that's very much isolationist. Uh, and uh, detached from the rest of the world, it's, it's time for the world to actually talk to them, sit down with them and, and uh, indicate, you know, what the carrots are and what the sticks are. Um, the country needs a lot of help. Uh, we have a population of 35 million people. The last time the Taliban were in charge, the population was 21 million. We have three crises. We have a political crisis, we have an economic crisis, and we have a humanitarian crisis. And for them to manage it, they would need international help. Do you think from, of course, the limited interaction that you and your organisation has had at this point in time, that the Taliban has changed? And you mentioned there uh, it's a charm offensive and they've got to win hearts and minds. Are they succeeding in that? Because presumably you're going to be hearing a lot of feedback from the media that your viewers are consuming uh, in Afghanistan. Well, you know, it's a changed country. So if, if, they're, if they're smart... Um, and they want to serve their people as they say they, they, they do, uh, they have to understand that 65% of the population is under the age of 20. It's the youngest country outside of uh, sub-Saharan Africa. It's a totally different country to the one that they, that they ruled over uh, in the 1990s. Uh, the population has gone up by 67 or 68% since 2001. Uh, and, uh, you know, we have this vastly urbanized country, uh, people are connected, they consume media, they watch TV, they're on Facebook, uh, Twitter and so forth. So it, it just depends on, on how engaged they want, they want to be with their own people. Um, but time will tell. I think in the next two, three weeks, we, we'll, we'll have a fair idea in terms of what sort of government they have, A, and uh, how, how engaged they want to be. But it takes two to tango. I think the world needs to also start engaging with them more aggressively.